All right, so today we're going to solve the 2015 second session EGU past paper for mathematics. We're only going to do course one, the basic course. Let's move on to the first question. Now, question one, let A and B be real numbers where B is in between zero and seven. Let us consider the maximum value big M and the minimum value small m of the quadratic function f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus a over the interval x is in between b and 7. The function f of x can be represented as f of x equals x minus something squared plus a minus something. So we are to find uh, a and b. Now, the way you would do this is you would change this expression x squared minus 6x plus a into this form. The most important part is we have to change x squared minus 6x uh, into this form, x minus something squared. So we know the formula a minus b squared equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. We can write the other way around, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared equals a minus b squared. So we aim to use algebraic manipulation to change this expression into something like this so that it can equal uh, this form a minus b squared. If we have a look at x squared minus 6x, x squared minus 6x, 6x can be written as minus 2 times x times 3 and plus a. Now if you look here, you can compare x squared to a squared minus 2, minus 2, and a could be counted as x. So uh, a is x, therefore b is 3. So what we're missing here is plus b squared, which is plus 3 squared. So we can add, so x squared minus 2 times x times 3, we can add. We can add 3 squared, however, we must minus 3 squared back so that it, uh, so that uh, these two expressions are equal to each other. Now, we can rewrite uh, this first part here as x minus 3 squared. And now we simplify the rest, you get plus a minus 3 squared, which is 9. Now you've got your answer, a is 3 and b is 9. So a equals 3 and b equals 9. Now moving on. For each CDG in the following statements, choose the correct answer from among 0 to 9 below. We are to find big M and small m. There are two cases. When b, uh, when b is in between 0 and c, then big M equals something, small m equals something. When b is in between c and 7, then big M equals something, small m equals something. So let's go back to the top. What do we know? First, we know that b is in between 0 and 7. It cannot be equal to 0, it cannot be equal to 7. And the next thing we know that big M represents the maximum value of uh, f of x, and small m represents the minimum value of f of x. We know that f of x equals x squared uh, minus 6x plus a, but it also equals uh, x minus 3 squared plus a minus 9. The next uh, condition is that x is in between uh, b and 7. Let us rewrite that down here. First, we know that f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus a, and it equals x minus 3 squared plus a minus 9. This function exists on the interval of b is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 7. And we also know that the value of b uh, is in between 0 and 7. So in order to solve this problem, you need to imagine the graph first. Um, as you know, this expression here is in the form, in the form of a x squared plus bx plus c, which is a quadratic equation, which means it represents a parabola. So the graph of f of x either looks like this or looks like this, parabola, of course. The graph of f of x would look like this 
if a is smaller than zero. The graph would look like this if a is bigger than zero. And of course, the condition is a cannot be zero. Or else, if a equals zero, it wouldn't be a quadratic uh, expression. If you look over here, we can see that a is equal to plus one, which is bigger than zero. Therefore, the graph of the function looks as such. Okay, now that we understand that, uh, let me just erase this. I will also put a is bigger than zero. Cool. Now let us uh, attempt to draw the graph. Okay, so now we know that the graph looks like this. But what we also know from this expression over here, x minus 3 squared plus a minus 9, uh, is that the graph has a, a minimum point at x equals 3. Therefore, at x equals 3, the graph it is at its lowest. And we also know that the graph exists, the function exists in the interval x is in between b and 7. So the graph will end at 7. So it would look something like this. It would end here. It will not continue. And of course, it will also go the other way. However, it ends at b. But we don't know where b is. All we know is that uh, b is in between 0. Let me just put 0 here. b is in between 0 and 7. So it means that b, b could be here, b could be here, b could be here. We don't know. Okay. But what we do know is that since b is bigger than 0, it means that this, the left side of the graph would end here. It would end here. It would not touch zero, but really close to zero. Uh, now, another thing you should notice is that from three to seven, the difference is four units. So seven minus three is four. But from zero to three, the difference is only three units. Since this is a parabola and the minimum value or the vertex is at x equals three, if you imagine a proper parabola, both sides sort of like, you know, increase at the same rate. So since here is 3 to 7 is 4 units, which means that this value uh, would be bigger than this value. So that's something you should keep in mind. What do we want to know? There are two cases when B is in between 0 and something, you get a specific minimum value and maximum value for the uh, function. So let's imagine, let's suppose that B is over here. If B was here, it would mean that the graph, you only count the graph from here to here. This is what the graph looks like, just like that. So what would be the minimum value? Well, the minimum value, the lowest point would be over here, the maximum value, the highest point would be over here. The minimum value would be f of 3, and the maximum would be f of 7. Okay, cool. f of 3 and f of 7. Remember, f of 3 and f of 7. Now, suppose that b is, if b was over here, you would get the same effect. Uh, minimum f of, f of 3, maximum f of 7. And if uh, b was at 3, you would get the same effect. Minimum is f of 3 and maximum if is f of 7. However, obviously b cannot be here. Uh, b cannot equal 0. So you would get the same result if b was in between 0 and 3. Because if you put b over here, as you can see, this would be the graph, then. The minimum value would be here, which is f of b. The maximum is f of 7. So it's different from the last examples I gave. Therefore, 
we can from that graphically we can deduce that if b was in between 0 and 3 but b cannot equal 0 then the uh, maximum value so let's say for example b was here then the maximum value of the function would be at f equals 7 so f uh, sorry f of 7 and then the minimum value would be here at f of 3 so f of 3 so we know that d equals f of 7 and if you substitute that into f of x you would get um, 7 squared so 49 minus 7 times 6 42 plus a you would get a plus 7 a plus 7 is 5 here it will equal to 5 and then e is equal to f of 3 if you substitute that into this expression 3 minus 3 is 0 so you would end up with a minus 9 a minus 9 is equal to 7 oops sorry 7 here okay so we got the values for d and e now we have to find f and g so oh yeah i forgot uh we know that c yeah sorry c uh is three is three so that's uh, here three because you know if, if b was as i said if b was in between zero and three so c is equal to three now the second case is if b is in between three and seven so if b was in between 3 and 7 here to here let's take a random point here if b was here then the graph would be here this would be the graph is what it looks like the maximum value would be at f equals 7 and the minimum would be at f equals b and if you put b here you get the same result f of b if you put b here you get the same result b here you get the same result Therefore, if b, if b is in between 3 and 7, the maximum value would be at f equals 7 again. The minimum value would be at f of b. Okay? So f of 7 is uh, here, 5. So f equals 5. And then f of b, if you substitute b into this function, f of x, f of b uh, would be equal to b squared minus 6b plus a. So here, number 8. Okay, so now we finish this section of this part. Uh, the last one is in the case that big M equals 13 and small m equals 1. We have A equals something, B equals something. Okay, so if you look at the top here, you can see that for both cases, both cases, big M has the same value, F of 7, which is A plus 7. So that's constant. However, the value of small m changes. Uh, in the first case, it's F of 3. Second case is F of B. So let's study the constant one first. Okay, so uh, let's see, we know that m equals 13, but we also know that m equals f of 7, which equals a plus 7 here, f of 7, f of 7 is a plus 7 here. All right, so a plus 7 equals 13. Therefore, we can find out the value of a being equal to 6. So we know that h is 6. Cool. Now we have to find b. So we, since there are two cases, these two cases, we're going to study those two cases. If uh, b was in between 0 and 3 as such in this interval, then, oops, then, um, so here, if b was here, then small m would equal to f of 3. So, 
small m will equal to f of 3 which equals to here a minus 9 so a minus 9 okay but if you look up here it says in the case that m equals 13 it means small m equals 1 so we can say oh uh, we can write this as equivalent to a minus 9 equals 1 therefore a equals 10 but this is contradictory because we just showed that a equals 6 and a equals 10 these two uh, these two are not the same so this is contradiction we don't we don't take it so uh, so we don't take it yet okay so next we will study the second case which is if um, b is in the interval 3 to 7 here um, hence that means that small m would equal to f of b which would equal to b squared minus 6b plus a so uh, then small m would equal to f of b which would equal to b squared minus 6b plus 6 and plus 6 yep but we also know that uh, m small m equals 1 so we can write this as b squared minus 6b plus 6 equals 1 and we can solve for b so b squared minus 6b plus 5 equals 0. You can rewrite this as b minus 1, b minus 5 equals 0. Therefore, b can either be equal to 1 or equal to 5. So let's study these two cases. If um, b equals 1, so if b equals 1, and then you substitute it back into this expression, you would get 1 minus 6 plus 6 which is equal to 1 that is correct because m small m does equal to 1 if b equals 5 and you substitute it back into this expression you would get uh, 25 minus 30 plus 5 is that correct oh sorry 25 minus 30 plus 6 sorry yeah 25 minus 30 plus 6 which is also 1 so these two are correct no no that's not true if you look we gave the condition if b was in between 3 and 7 and if we found that b equals 1 this is not true because b is supposed to be in between 3 and 7 and 1 is not in between 3 and 7 so b is not 1 so b is equal to 5 b is equal to 5 so over here is 5 so we have here h equals 6 and i equals 5 and that completes the first question of the first section